everyone! Welcome back to another week of Clip Studio Paint Tutorial! Today we are on part 2 of Vector Layer. This is going to be all about advanced usage of Vector Layer in Clip Studio Paint. If you have no idea what Vector even is, or why you should be using it for line art, or the basic functions such as the Vector Eraser and the Line Width Adjustment, be sure to check out the video from last week first. But if you insist on skipping it, it's not like I can stop you. It's just that, you know, be ready to get really confused. We have a lot to cover this week. I'm going to do my absolute best to keep it short and simple, but if I can't, do yourself a favor and watch this video in two times the speed. Trust me, it makes everything so much more hilarious. Have you ever wanted to do lines in a- You know, I'm not even going to do a have you segment today because Clip Studio Paint's Vector Line Art has completely reinvented the way that I approach line art. And whatever that I was having is no longer being had. That sentence doesn't even make sense. So buckle up and get ready to have your mind blown. The very first function we are going to look at is the pinch vector line subtool. This function is used when you want to readjust the position of any line. You can adjust the pinch level to change tendency to bend lines. Now, honestly, I don't really know what that means from a you know English standpoint, but I just kind of go with the flow and okay that's pretty cool <laughs> i don't know why we, we can probably design some like shoulder pads over here or something you can also change the effect range to a more precise control when you go to operation under object and click on each vector line you will see that vector lines are made of dots in the software it's called control points but i call them dots and with that in mind Fix both ends means the very first dot and the very last dot in this path is not going to be moved. And no matter how much you move this line, you will see that both ends are fixed. And if you switch to fix either end, you will see that this end is going to become elevated. And no matter where you drag it, the other one is not going to move. And if you select the last one, free both ends, you guessed it it's going to move the entire path. So that is how you redraw a line. Magical, isn't it? The second feature I want to talk about today is connect vector line and simplify vector line. I'll talk about these two together. As you can see, your hand-drawn lines are truthfully recorded in the forms of path and control points. Understanding what you see in relationship to these control points and path is crucial to understanding the next step. So let's take a closer look. These bumpy lines are caused by me drawing very zoomed out, and because the tablet that I'm using, which is Wacom One, is very sensitive, so it's faithfully recording my every twist and turns. And the beauty of Clip Studio Paint Vector is that it auto-generates control points that stay true to your lines. So a messier line such as this one would naturally have more points. Simplify and connect vector line is to delete the extra dots, or connect the overlapping path. And if you're thinking, whoa, what just happened? Don't worry, that is completely normal, especially coming from raster line or background. In these confusing moments, you go under view, show vector path, show vector path on selected layers, and you'll be able to see exactly what's going on by observing the behavior of these orange dots and path. This is before, and that's after. If that was too fast for you, because I know you're watching it in double the speed, it'll be clearer if you compare it side by side. Spot the difference. So one, two, th however many dots in the before has been reduced to one, two, three, four. And the disconnected path are now all connected. And with that, I can clean up a lot of small details and adjust the curve of my lines very quickly. But that's cheating! That's right, I just cheat at time. You see, the thing about these tools is that they really only help you to speed up your process. In my head, I knew how I wanted the curve. I knew where I wanted the thicks and thins. And instead of having to draw the same line 40 times to get it exactly the way I wanted, I could shorten that time down to seconds. And time is crucial in this career path. You could be spending the time exploring more character design ideas to hone your storytelling abilities to work on another thumbnail or, you know, terraforming in Animal Crossing. 
These tools are extremely valuable, especially to those who don't have a display tablet. I did this piece in 2016 on Intuos 3, which is a non-display tablet, using another software that isn't Clip Studio Paint. The line art itself took me 20 freaking hours. And I had to take a week off of drawing because my wrist was basically dead. But now with Clip Studio Paint's innovative design, as well as Wacom's display tablet becoming more and more affordable, Digital line art is now easier to access than ever before. But did you think that was my closing comment? Class is not over. If pinching the line art isn't as intuitive to you as just drawing, you can use this function called redraw vector line. Using the same concept as before, it will always adjust the line that you first touch. All I have to do is go over the same line and redraw it. And if I want to connect these two paths, all I need to do is select connect lines and then redirect this path upwards. There, it snapped to the other one. The perk of this function is the ability to redraw any line at any point of time without affecting other lines. And while that is it for the line correction itself, I have one more thing to show you. We did the sketch in inking pen. What if I want another texture? Another awesome thing about Vector is that it has the flexibility of changing what's being applied to the path at any time. In this case, we want to change the drawing to a softer look. So we go into Object, look for a brush shape, click on the drop-down menu, and change it to another shape. And just like that, you get the pencil look instead. But that's a little light, so we'll go and use the correct line width that we talked about last week. Scale up width, cross this whole line, and just do that. Oh, that's too thick. But, well, you get the gist. Or you can always duplicate the same layer multiple times to darken it. I always do that. And if you're wondering right now, how did she get the Pencil 01 in the brush shape? Because that's not part of the default. I got you covered as well. Select the brush that you want the texture from. You know, standard is boring, so let's go for something crazy. I remember there's a gold chain brush. I think it was under clothing. Ah, there you go. The gold chain. So this brush looks like this. <laughs> oh boy, this is going to be either very awful or a total genius. And now we want the entire drawing to be done in this brush. So click on the Show Subtool Detail Palette, the little wrench icon in your Tool Property panel. And then go into Brush Shape and Register to Preset. And now it's going to show up in your drop-down menu. So let's go back to Object. Brush shape, click on the drop down, and there you go. The moment of truth. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad, I guess. But what if you're a traditional artist wanting your line art to be drawn and go chain as well? <laughs> Please don't fire me. <laughs> This is a scan of my traditional piece. It was originally done on illustration board with a micron. It is currently a raster image scanned in as a TIFF, but we're going to try and turn it into vector. So click on edit and convert brightness to opacity. This is going to give you line art without background. I'm going to create another layer underneath it and then fill it with color so you can see it a bit easier. Right click on your line art layer and look for convert layer. From the drop-down menu in Type, choose Vector Layer instead. And in the Vector setting, you can play around with the numbers to achieve the result that you want. I keep it at 8 and 5 as they tend to give me the best result. Remember to always check the Keep Original Layer so that you can always go back to it if you're not satisfied with the result. And now we just press OK and hope for the best. Voila! Now remember to turn off the original layer as they're laying on top of each other, hence thickening the lines. There you go. Not too bad. Okay, okay, are you ready? I'm totally not. But let's go to Object and Brush Shape and Changes to Gold Chain. That's actually kind of awesome! <laughs> How about like a darker color for background? Man, that's actually kind of cool. Okay, never mind. Yeah, that's a, that, yeah, that, no. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Nope. All jokes aside, now you actually have your traditional drawing in vector form. So you can easily change it to other textures if you so wish. 
Vector line color also works a little bit differently. When you're in the operation menu, simply change the color by selecting other colors. And if you're not in the operation panel, you can still pick another color, go under edit, change color of line to drawing, and have that changed for you. You can also make a selection and use the same function to change that section. And that concludes this week's tutorial. I hope it helped to shed some light on the vector usage and make it a little bit less intimidating for you. If you still don't feel comfortable with it, don't worry. The raster line art in Clip Studio Paint is still really amazing with intricate control over stabilization. Every tool certainly has some learning curve to get through. So if you feel like this is worth your time to learn, start small, don't overwhelm yourself too much, get accustomed to each setting, try different things, and one day you'll get a hang of it and you'll be saving hours and hours and hours on line art. Trust me, I've been through it. And now that you have your line art, want to apply some color? Next week, we are going to talk about how easy it is to do flats and clip studio paint. You thought using paint bucket was easy? Wait until you learn about the close and fill in clip studio paint. And that's coming up next week. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I am the one with bear and I'll see you next week.